What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Unconventional Money Moves podcast. As I forgot to do the last couple episodes, go check out my book, Boy Who Picked Up a Penny. It's on Amazon. You got kids, teach them about money because money is very important. And we got Ben here, who is a renaissance man. He invented the kid caddy because he wanted to bring his kids out to the golf course. He does consulting for large technology companies with web development as well as he has his normal nine to five job, two kids and a wife, and he is a vampire and he is just working and grinding. We met at the PGA show down in Orlando, his product, the kid caddy, which essentially pops onto a shore and you turn your kid carrier into a, basically a push cart so you can bring your kids on the course. So happy to have Ben on. And he said he had a good update on the kid caddy so I, I was curious to hear what what's going on with the kid caddy now i know you've grown your instagram to over like twenty thousand. uh i saw you went viral and not just like a million like five million six million seven million views so like what's going on there just uh for all the golf fans and entrepreneurs out there yeah the the social media side of things has been pretty exciting um yeah kid caddy is it's kind of uh, an idea of how to keep new parents active on the golf course. And, you know, when new parents, you know, they go into that transition phase where everything changes, they kind of lose themselves, their sense of self. And, you know, the kid caddy allows them to, to go out and still do the activities they enjoy, but get that one-on-one -on -one time as a, a parent and the product and kind of that mission has really seemed to resonate with people. So we got it onto social media and, We've got a post right now that just crossed six million. Uh, I think our highest one is is eight million. So we're over the last year we're at about twenty million views just through our our social media uh, golf stroller on Instagram. And so it's been really exciting to see that kind of take off and people get behind the the product. And then we you know debuted it at the PGA Show last year finished fourth out of 110 companies in the new product zone which was was really validating and then uh from there it's just been a lot of excitement um uh, kind of building up from there we we launched it with our injection mold and we're able to land in all 50 states and all provinces in Canada right after the release and then we've since gone international and we're in about 20 countries now and the some kind of major press uh, has picked us up as well. We've we've gotten a, a commercial on the Golf Channel. Uh, we're running on PBS as a segment on some of their segments throughout the remainder of the year. And so lots of fun things happening there. Yeah, and like for anyone that has a good idea, step one is to take action on the idea and just the go for it, which you definitely went for it. And obviously, if there's a problem out there that you feel like is beneficial to help other people, you should definitely explore that idea now like with kid caddy blowing up like how did all the the press come about was it all organic did you have to hustle a little bit because the biggest thing for anyone starting out is getting your name out there yeah it was a really a grind uh from the start like i was not much of a social media guy um in my personal life i, I did it a lot for for work and kind of helped other companies build their brands um but really getting it out there and, and telling the story. And so, I mean, for anyone that hasn't seen the product, it is a, it's a golf club holder that sets right on the handlebars and allows you to put 18 clubs, seven balls, tees, ball markers, all of that into the, uh, into the stroller and just let you walk as if it was just a normal golf bag. And so kind of taking that online and telling the story, uh, I was able to, you know, Try to figure out the algorithms, try to try to get that going. And it took, you know, a hundred posts before I kind of figured out the secret sauce. And then once I figured out what resonated with people, then it was able to really start picking up momentum and growing. And to this day, we are still a hundred percent uh all organic. Uh, our ad spend is is zero dollars because uh, I really wanted to build the relationship of you know, families answering the comments myself. Um, so I still run all my own social media. And uh, I mean, I've, I've answered 10,000 comments uh, on our posts. And a lot of that was because I had an idea that worked for me and I wanted to know if it was going to work for other families. So you have, you know, people that have, have seen it in different lights and I wanted to make sure I understood all the angles so I could speak to them and being able to really 
and anybody that's starting out with an idea of nobody's going to know it as well as you, nobody's going to take care of it and grow it in the same way that you are. And so it kind of becomes your baby a little bit, but it's also, um, you know, like starting any company, if you can wear all the hats, you know, um, how to do the jobs, then you're going to be able to hire for those jobs better later. And that's kind of the, the 2024 growth path for Kid Caddy is bringing some additional people on board to help us scale and help um, really kind of get this idea out on more storefronts and in front of more people. Totally. And social media is a different beast and a lot of people struggle with it. Did you, what was, what was that one aha moment? Was, was it one thing? Was it like five different things that like just popped up? So probably the biggest kicker that kind of took it from very much a grind to it started to sprinkle excitement in there was um, the trending audio and video clips. Like putting those two pieces together was allowed me to kind of make more dynamic content that I was excited about rather than, you know, I'd go out and I'd take a hundred photos and I'd, you know, have the whole schedule. Like I'm going to post every day. I'm going to have different captions. I'm going to comment on other people's stuff. And while that's a, a strategy that may work for some, for mine, the, tori- the story was told best through video format and then bringing that to an engaging audio uh, really was uh, what took my content to the next level. Totally. Because since you're a tech expert, you have a better understanding of what the algorithm actually is a lot of people online social media experts will be saying you got to adjust with the algorithm do these people even really know what an algorithm actually is like Uh, yeah i mean it's it's learned behaviors you know um so and that's and that's really and so i I do personalization uh in my nine to five job with, with the technology space and it's it's really trying to understand who the, the customer is and what they're looking for and what's going to help best move them along that journey. And uh, for social media companies, that journey is they want you to, you know, share posts, interact with them, uh, you know, comment on them and, you know, watch a substantial amount of them. So you have a lot of people building their, and you'll see different trends come through of encouraging people to, to share it with a friend, engaging captions that have them spend more time on the video. Uh, the very famous, like, wait till the end uh, tag that you see right away. Um, so all of these are people trying to, to train the algorithm, but it really just comes down to, uh, you know, having your content provide value. And if it has, provides value or, you know, that, uh, information while at the same time being entertaining you know that's going to be the mix that really is going to resonate with people and the the organic quality content is really what's going to take off for sure and being that you do take the time to focus on everything because when you're starting any company or organization the most important item is having that solid foundation of at least understanding how things are working as you decide to scale. And a lot of people don't know what scale is. Essentially, scale is taking time out of the equation. So if you can take time out of the equation, and instead of just five kid caddies being sold straight from Ben's garage when he was starting out with the 3D printers, you were using 3D printers in the beginning, to getting the injection molding, Walk us through what that process looks like for you, because I feel like that's a vital mistake a lot of people make, either attempting to be a jack of all trades, which you could do for a certain amount of time until you crash and burn, and figuring out when to push various tasks to others to help you out with the mission. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about my my journey and then kind of where I've been at with those realizations along the way. Uh, so Kid Caddy started with, you know, when you have an idea, don't perfection is the op is the the enemy of progress. You know, you hear that said quite often. Where uh, my first prototypes were quick and dirty. I was hanging like hangers from the closet onto a stroller to see if it was going to work, and then we moved through different materials like wood and metal until uh, I, I ended up I traded a website 
to a guy who uh, bought me a 3D printer out of it. And so that was kind of my, it's like, all right, well, this is what I need to do. What skill sets do I have that can kind of help me? help me move this along. So it's always kind of like side hustles are exactly that. They're side hustles. So you you do what you can to move them forward during your normal day to day. And so that got into 3D printing, kind of taught myself the skill set. Uh, fortunately had a cousin who does mechanical engineering that was able to help me with some of the early designs. And so we got a more advanced prototype. And then it was just test it, iterate and continue moving forward from there. Once I had an idea that I was excited about and I wanted to bring to the public, um, I upgraded my 3D printer studio from one to uh, seven printers. And so it's uh, a considerable investment early on, but nowhere near what a, an injection mold is. Like an injection mold for anybody that's looking to make it a plastic part. Um, if it's a small one, you might be able to make it, you know, for 10 to 30 grand. Um, you know, my part is significantly larger. So I was looking at a six figure investment in order to get it to injection molding. And so I really had to, to put my idea through the paces to see if I was going to commit that kind of capital to it. And uh, so I hired a small team. We would make the Kid Caddy parts in eight pieces. We'd take them into the shop. And in winter, we had the space heaters going as we're cleaning them up, uh, putting them together, and then built a social media presence and a website around it. And we would do drops and they would disappear and we'd sell 30 in five minutes. And it's like, all right, well, there's, there's interest there. And then it just kind of came down to, do I believe in this enough to, to make it go? And I did. And, you know, for, for me, it became easy to commit the, the time and effort to growing the brand because there was a significant, you know, financial element behind it, but being able to go and take something Fortunately for me, my idea, I felt like had a, a very personal connection to it as well. For everyone that we sell, there's a new family that is getting their child into the game of golf. And every everyone that we sell, a parent you know, gets to keep that sense of self of being able to, to go out and do activities that they really enjoy. Yeah. Bringing people together to create memories is essentially the experience you're giving people. It's not just putting something onto a shore so you can have an excuse to get out of the house. It's really bringing people together and creating those life, lifelong memories out on the golf course. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people attempt to do shortcuts and it's important to know you can't get a return without an investment. So you got to be able to invest in order to get that return. You can't expect to get things for free. There is no free lunch when it comes to getting something. Now that you did the 3D printers, now you're doing the injection molding. What is that next hurdle for you and Kit Caddy to take in order to get in all the shops like Walmart, Target? Is that the next step for y'all? Yeah. So there, there is definitely a, a retail element of this. Um, you know, we're exploring the idea of what it looks like to sell Kid Caddy from walking across an aisle and seeing a box. Can we tell the story and show the value by, you know, the retail packaging? And that's so much of it is also the brand awareness for people that are familiar with who we are, know they can find us at those, those locations if they want to see it and hold it in person before they order it. Um, what I've really found is that the video element of this and being able to show multiple different perspectives of it is really what we feel like is a great sales element of, of the product. And so that's why being able to sell it online direct to consumer has been a, a valuable element to kind of our sales funnel. Um, but in terms of 2024, you had asked previously, like, what are some of the, you know, when do you know when to hand things off? When do you know when to kind of own them, be that jack of all trades. And so to this point, I'm, I'm, if you want, if you want to grind as, as hard as I have, you can be a jack of all trades for a long time. And, but at the same time, if you want to, you want to scale and, and grow a company, you have to identify what your opportunities to get delegate are and what are, what are the things that I'm good at and I should be investing in to kind of 10 X my time versus putting in, you know, the effort of moving things across the board just because they have to get done. And that's how the business runs. And so 2024 is going to be around continuing to build a team out. So it's going to be some of those salespeople for uh, retailers 
and shops and also international is going to be a big component. Um, golf is so walkable in other countries, whereas, you know, there's pockets of the United States where it's very cart focused. And so I really have an interest in getting into those walkable communities and partnering with people in those spaces. And then also we've refined the idea. We've refined the brand. Um, we are going to get more into that paid marketing space uh, in this upcoming year. And so getting onto more, you know, storefronts and bringing on people that can be very analytical and very, very detail driven. Um, and that's kind of their focus rather than it's easy for that to fall to the wayside when I'm trying to do 10 things at once. And I really want to, when you're investing, you know, hundred dollars or hundreds of dollars every day in, in a marketing budget, you want to make sure somebody's keeping an eye on that. 100%. And you've been so successful in so many different things. Have you, have you failed? And what, what did that look like? Have you, have you just failed your way to success? I feel like not a lot of people talk about that. They always talk about the successes. They don't tell like the background stories that I, I, I feel like it's interesting because you have become super successful with Kit Caddy. You have a portfolio of real estate. You have a successful job. Your family seemed like you have a good experience with your family. So you haven't even lost that. Some people have to give up one thing for the other. And that, so I would say uh, there's a couple of different angles I could, I could talk about that. So I've, I've had some, um, when Kid Caddy, Kid Caddy started, uh, that was in you know 2018, I started out as I wanted to build this product for me to be able to go and play with my family. And it, it always kind of was creeping in the back of my mind that this could be bigger than it was. Um, it was maybe a missed opportunity for me to not invest the time and effort into to making it the primary focus early on. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs suffer from the same thing I did where you have, you have shiny object syndrome. It's like, Oh, I want to, I want to do that. Like this, there's so many things that seem fun. And especially as you know, technology advances or you move along in your career, you get more skill sets, you have more opportunities to, to build, you know, side hustles into things that you're uh, excited about. And that kind of happened to me for a couple of years there where I'd started on Kid Caddy, had a, a really good idea and then didn't, necessarily want to be the solopreneur. I wanted to work with a team. I've always found value in working with, with like-minded people and it just becomes more fun and you kind of bounce ideas off of each other and it keeps the momentum up. And so we had a, a, a pet product that we launched a Kickstarter and the, the product was actually, it's a, a smart hamster wheel. It tracks how fast, how far, how often your pet runs. And uh, we built prototypes, had about 30 of them out around the country having, having testers. And we had actually planned a number of a uh, whole web portal where you could actually race. So you and I can race our pets. And so it's a, a way <laughs> for, a way for kids to, uh, way for kids to engage in a pet that's typically nocturnal and isn't as easily engaged with. It gets them excited about it. And so that was something that we wanted, wanted to, to focus in on and actually won some international awards for it and took it to Kickstarter. Oh, wow. um, and didn't end up, we didn't want to put the marketing budget behind it. And we wanted to try Kickstarter out to see what their platform could do for us in terms of raising the awareness and quickly learned that unless you're going to market on Kickstarter, it's not, it, they're not going to take it and run with it. It's not going to make the money that you want unless you are building the, the community around it. And, uh, you know, nobody on our team necessarily wanted to run the the social media side, the marketing side. Uh, the way we wanted to do the engineering. Like I was building the software side of things. We had a hardware guy. We had um, like the modeling and engineering. And so I think we could have gotten there had we either brought in more people onto the team that wanted to focus on those elements. Um, but we ended up uh, all pivoting and all three of us have, have since started successful companies that are probably more successful than that one would have. So it was probably good for us to pivot. Um, but that took about a year and a half out of the Kid Caddy timeline um, to work on that. But it's one of those fail forward deals. Like I knew what I wanted to do when launching a company. I knew what was important in order to get people uh, behind an idea. And, uh, you know, and, and just because you pivot doesn't mean ideas are gone forever. So what did you learn from that experience that helped you with Kid Caddy? Uh, I learned the the type of community that I wanted to be a part of. If I'm going to put this amount of time into it, like I, I've never been uh, like the, the idea for the hamster wheel wasn't 
it wasn't mine. It was one that I got excited about because I saw the the potential to bring people together in a way that hadn't been done before. But like I've been a golfer my my whole life, and to to put yourself behind an entrepreneurial idea, it is a time commitment and it's a, a passion that you really have to be behind for it to go. Um, no matter how good the idea is, like we like we won awards for that idea and it didn't go. So it, knowing Kid Caddy was something that I was very passionate about because of the problem it solved in my own life. And I could convey that to other people. I think that's part of the thing that helped me get over that shiny object syndrome is do the things that I'm passionate about and being able to invest that time and effort was really going to pay benefits in a number of different areas in my life. With any idea, it could be the greatest idea. However, you got to be able to sell the idea to other people where it's actually affordable for them to trade dollars for your product or your service. Uh, just because not every great idea is worth bringing to market, even if it's really good, sometimes uh, you have to let that dream die, which could be painful. Yeah, it absolutely is. And then it's just like anything. What's the opportunity cost of that? Um, you know, I've, I've got a family with a five-year-old and a two-year-old and every, you know, there's, there's hours in the morning and hours in the evening that, you know, are, our time that I can take to, to work on side projects like this, since I do have a nine to five job that takes up the majority of the day. And, but outside of that, there's time that needs to be, you know, spent with family. Cause that really is the, the most important part of, um, you know, my life and making sure that that is still the primary focus. Well, then your hours to commit to a, uh, a side job need to be very intentional and you need to make sure that you're investing those into the thing that you really want to be doing because you're, you're trading sleep and you're trading sleep in uh you know, a lot of times social life for that as well. Are you ever going to may not be able to talk about this, but I'm going to ask anyway, are you, are you are, at any point you're going to leave the nine to five? Cause it seems like things are going well with the kid caddy and everything. You know, there's an element to the nine to five that I, I really enjoy with being in like the technology space is that it's, it's constantly not, I, I'm, I try to brand myself a lifelong learner. I, I really enjoy finding uh, new challenges and implementing them and working with smart people. And I think that's one thing that I really enjoy about my nine to five job is that I get to solve hard, hard problems and do it sitting next to very smart people. And I've kind of moved into the leadership space there where my skill sets of, you know, handling multiple projects at the same time and, you know, helping people advance their career based on kind of the way that I can set a, a, a vision for, all right, here's how you can grow your skill sets. Here's how you can grow your communication tools. Being able to mentor people in that way has really been valuable to me. And so, um, you know, there's the the financial elements of it, but there's also the the camaraderie in career growth and career capital. And I think that's the, those are pieces that I want to make sure that uh, I'm leveraging as much as I can before I, I do make a career shift. And I say that the word career capital is, you know, I've spent 12 years in the technology space, kind of growing, uh, growing my skill sets, growing my my name within my my company. And I want to make sure that if I'm going to step away, um, that I've either I'm taking the relationships with me or I am. Uh, making sure that I'm stepping away in a way that is going to uh, continue to invest in that career capital. I'm using my skill sets in a way that is really going to, uh, you know, enhance my life until I get to the point where, you know, somebody wants to buy Kid Caddy down the road and I can, I can be recreationally employed from there. Yeah. You got to, but you got to build goodwill. You got to build relationships. You constantly got to be adapting with the changing landscape especially in technology. Technology is always learning, always adapting, always adjusting. And if you don't adjust with it, you're going to turn into that person who doesn't know how to use anything. So you don't want to become that person. Check out the Kid Caddy. It's phenomenal. I've seen it. I still need to buy one. Uh, it's a little cold where I'm at right now, so I can't use it. But appreciate having been on. Thanks for everyone listening. We'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone.